Okay, video got cut off. Thursday, July 23rd, I believe it is, at 2.30 p.m. here at 12200 Paseo Nueve Drive in the El Paso Pain Center on the east side. I am a disabled veteran. I have had an appointment here for quite some time. I come today. They said I need a mask. I explained to them that I'm mask exempt. They asked for the letter. I told them, or they asked for the letter. I was like, I showed them my paperwork. They're saying their policy, their policy. I explained policy does not supersede federal law, the Americans with Disabilities Act, whether you're a medical facility or not. I am being refused medical treatment. When I started recording, the nurse walked in and shut the door. Okay? So, I am being refused medical treatment. Okay? That is a fucking violation. Okay? I am being denied as a disabled veteran. Okay? As a disabled freaking veteran, I am being denied by these people. That's their address and phone number. The El Paso Paint Center, the east side. Okay? I am being denied medical treatment. The Department of Veterans Affairs, you are liable for this. Okay? I will be seeking justice, and this is this is the last time I'm being screwed by these tyrannical bullcrap things, okay? My rights far supersede medical treatment. But the fact is, this, this is going to stop, okay? I have no problem now going after a doctor. That's a good payday if, you know, it goes to court now, okay? So, this, this is the end of the line, guys. You know, I, I'm tired of this. This shit's going to stop. So I am going to be getting, I'm going to be contacting somebody. Best believe it, I'm going to be going after somebody, okay? So I'm going to be going after this. Yes, sir. I need to get the name of the manager and everyone so I can get my attorney. Okay. So I need to go ahead and get the... I just need to write it, write it down, that's all I need. Okay. There it is, American with Disabilities Violation Information Hotline. I will be calling them first. Then I'll be calling my attorney. So you guys heard it. I went in there. They got a guy blocking the door, so I couldn't get in. I asked just to write it down. Manager's name and everything. So I'm waiting for them to go ahead and give me that information. I live right around the corner from here, so I can be here all damn day. day. I, I'm, I'm tired of this, and th th this, this shit's going to stop. This shit will stop. I'm tired of this. I, I am beyond, beyond pissed off right now. This goes beyond politics and anything. This goes on for what is legally and ethically right. The Hippocratic Oath. This is a violation of their damn Hippocratic Oath. policy does not supersede federal law. There was no reasonable accommodations as outlined by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Oh, I need the contact information on there as well. Is the one that we have here, sir. Okay. So, well, where's the manager at right now? 
He's, he's busy at the moment. He's doing some conference calls. Well, who's the, the next uh, person that's in charge? Yeah, 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 yeah. We only have one manager, sir. So. Okay, and then uh, I need a copy of your alleged policy. All right. This is what was given to me. Eric Dayanata, or Anda. That's what was provided to me. This is what I asked for the information, the contact. That's the contact information they said. I asked for a copy of the policy as well. So now again, as an American veteran, combat veteran, disabled veteran, the Depart U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs Clinic, not a hospital, clinic in El Paso, Texas, has referred me for my back injuries and the treatment of to the El Paso Pain Center here at 12200 Paseo Nueve Drive on the east side uh, of Joe Battle and uh, Vista del Sol. Okay, zip code 79928. I had an appointment today that has been in the books for months okay I did everything that I need to do on my part I got my my prescription that they told me to the prescription that they told me to bring with me okay they told me on the phone about wearing a mask I said I explained to the lady if there's gonna be a problem I'd let you know now I have a mask exemption she said bring your paperwork and that'll be fine I brought my paperwork Brought my paperwork, all of it. I go in with my wife. My wife was told to come with me. That way, so someone can drive after. I was told to go ahead and uh, bring my, my medical exemption paperwork, my prescription that I had to get weeks in advance that I had to take with me when I originally had my appointment they, they canceled it because the doctor was uh, sent to the, uh, the west side location so today was my appointment i go in signed in gave my id card let them take my temperature i explained to them why i was here and then they said i need to have a mask on i said i have my medical exemption form she the lady at the counter which didn't give me her name but when i started recording they cowered inside and shut the door and they put a guy blocking the door so that lets you know that they they got caught their you know hands in a cookie jar so uh, I asked, I told him I need the manager's name, of which like, this is all that was provided to me. That's all that was provided to me, Eric, and uh, okay. So that this is pissing me off. Now, now they think that they have the power to go ahead and deny medical treatment, which is a violation of their Hippocratic oath as well as they are receiving federal funds through the Department of Veterans Affairs. Any place that takes federal funding for medical treatment cannot deny medical treatment. They're, that's why a hospital can take anybody off the street, whether they can pay or not. As long as that hospital gets funds for Medicaid, Medicare, they cannot deny treatment. The United States Department of Veterans Affairs is paying for my treatment as a 100% disabled veteran to this facility. Again, facility. El Paso Paint Center. There's their information. Okay. My doctor was supposed to be uh, Dr. Jesse Coleman. Cool guy. He's a veteran himself. Okay. I met him when I first got here a couple months ago. Set up all my appointments and whatnot. I've done everything. Respect the guy as a veteran. I don't respect what his office is doing. You can't hide behind policy when policy violates federal law. And that's under the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. No business. And that all goes hand in hand also with the, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, where no business, privately or publicly owned, can uh, discriminate based off of sex, religion, color, race, and disabilities. And then the Americans with Disabilities Act came forward from it.
So they're in violation of federal law. They're in violation of the Hippocratic Oath as well. So I'm waiting for this. This is going to go public. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to raise all kinds of hell with this now. This stuff is going way out of control now. This is now beyond every... This is personal now. This is a personal a personal thing for me now. I'm getting tired of this stuff here. Okay? Try to force this crap on the civilians. Now you're trying to deny veterans medical treatment that my service and all the service of the veterans have paid for. Okay? You're to now... But you're going to go ahead and take the money and you're going to mark me as a no-show. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go ahead and mark it as a no-show so they can get their couple hundred dollars saying, and they're going to make me say that I no-showed even though that I was here. This video serves as proof that I was here. They're going to go ahead and try to submit that I did not show. They will still go ahead and... Because they, they saved that spot. They're going to go ahead and say that I did not show. And they're going to go ahead and submit their payment. So... And I'm still waiting for their, their BS uh, policy. Once I get that, don't worry, I'll get that and I'll be on my way and I'll... By the way, it's be, be it known, for the record, whatever you want to call it, I am now under duress. I, I, when, I ha when I do vacate this, this area, I'm doing so not freely, but under duress. Because most likely they're going to try to call the cops and hide behind law, even though the law can't do anything about it. They can't even trespass me at this point. Okay, they can't trespass me at that point. Uh, so... I will be leaving under duress once I get what I, I'm waiting on, which is their their so-called policy, to, so that I can just just basically let them give me more ammunition for the lawsuit. This this is going this is this is ridiculous. Okay, this is ridiculous. Now I'm being denied medical treatment that I need. Okay, the VA couldn't do it, and I, the VA does the same thing. They 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 try to say that you have to have a mask to go in there, and I fought them before. They can't do that because of their medical facility. The commander in chief, President of the United States, Donald Trump, did not order did not order that. The Secretary of the Veterans Affairs did not take orders from Donald Trump to go ahead and instill the mask mandates. So there's no no orders standing for this. There's no enforcement therefore also. But yet they still try, so. And you guys call me crazy, call me whatever you want. I really don't care what you think. I'm doing this because it's what's right. Legally, morally, and ethically. Okay? It's accountability. Holding doctors accountable to their Hippocratic Oath. Holding the Department of Veterans Affairs accountable for doing this type of crap and letting it happen. Okay? This is also showing the corruption in our medical system for the, for the, the places that, civilian places that take money from the VA because like I said they're going to go ahead and submit that I was a no-show and they'll submit their payment voucher so they can go ahead and get compensated for my visit that never took place all because they got my ID card from the beginning and which I was, I was very respectful when I came in up to that mask part so I, I you know and I was pretty cool and I told them that you know I don't wear a mask I'm medically exempt she tried to say do you have my paperwork I had my paperwork she didn't even ask for it I had my paperwork and then she's like, well, what, what, what's the disability? And I said, under the UO, people would know, working in a medical profession, would know that under the, the, the rules of HIPAA, okay, I don't have to disclose that. So, they asked me to, they had to go talk to the manager and the doctor, which was fine. They asked us to step outside. I stepped outside. Been here ever since. And that was about 2.27, 2.28 p.m. Mountain Standard Time here in El Paso. So, I am now, you know, this is getting ridiculous. It's about 2.45, almost 2.45 now. It's 15 minutes of going on with this stuff. 15, 20 minutes. So, I'm still waiting now. Uh, when I tried to find out, they, they would not uh, talk. They just cowered in inside because I didn't have my phone going. Uh, but, 
I'm, I'm gonna get it recorded now. This, this shit's gonna get documented. Yeah, you, know, you don't have the right to refuse service medically. You don't. You don't. So if they're not coming out here in a minute or two, I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask him for the for the policy. So no, again, this is the east side location. There's Joe Battle. That's Paseo Nuevo. And Vista del Sol is uh, right where that uh, that blue sign is in the background, like right there. That's uh, Vista del Sol down there. So we're we're be we're between. Oh, Pelicano and uh, Vista del Sol here on the uh, far east side, zip code 79928. Uh, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to try to get in there and ask him for the, the policy since, you know, so I have it. Here we go. Try one last time. They don't give it to me. I'm heading out. Yes, sir. Uh, did it have the policy? I've been waiting uh, so I can have the policy. Oh, they're, they're, they're getting there right now, sir. Okay. we got to print it out. All right. How long do we think it's going to be? I'm sorry? How long? I can't give you a time limit, sir. Okay. Well, because I, I need that, like I said, so I can give it to my attorney. Okay. And then, uh, so, you guys are aware that you can't submit any payment to the VA, right? Because I, I know that's what the place to do when you submit payment. I don't handle with a bill. Well, I'm just saying, because there's the no bill. there's no office visit, so I didn't come here, and I'm not a no-show. So, so it's not, so it's marked, I'm not a no-show. So I'm still waiting. It's funny, look at another violation here too, is look at this. They have a 30 odd seven sign right here you can't even see it Let's see if you can zoom in oh there you go whatever happened to being visible it has to be visible so there's another violation right there 30 out seven sign you don't want to open carry that's fine but uh you got the sign you have to have it so it's posted that i don't believe that that suffices because that's behind tinted glass and an iron thing that no one's gonna look for and see when they walk up in here because here's where it is like i'm zoomed out okay you can barely see that right there And just, just the mere fact that they don't have a policy readily, because usually that's something that you would have like in a Word document or a PDF ready for, for any type of thing that you have to print out. It seems that they're right now, and I gotta go back on the footage, but it seems like they're typing it up as we speak. That's why it's taking forever. So that's, a, that's another red flag there, guys, that it's taking this long for them to give me something that's a policy that should already have been prepared and be ready for it, because that goes, for something that they can just get out of a folder and post it or put it in a binder for their employees they're typing it up so that's a red flag there guys they are actually the girl at the computer was sitting there like still typing and you did hear me make reference that you know that i am not a no-show they did acknowledge that i am not a no-show Nor, just also too, nor am I a cancellation. I did not cancel this appointment, and I did not no-show. I showed up and arrived. Appointment was at 1500 or 3 p.m. for civilians. I showed up about uh, just before 2.30 or 14.30. Signed in. 
was told by 245, so it's 15 minutes prior to 15 minutes prior. Okay, as per military style. Okay, so I was there ready, ready to go in. I gave my ID card. I had my paperwork in hand. I had my prescription that I was told to bring with me for the, uh, for the procedure. I go in, told I need a mask. I said I'm medically exempt, and I was told on the phone that I did not need, uh, or that that I just had to bring my medical exemption form, which I did. I had it again, right here, my paperwork. All, and then there again, there's the office manager that they they claim is what was given to me. Pretty suspicious. That it's just Eric De Anda is just the name, no contact. Then they pointed. They said the contact information. They pointed to that right there, the the address. And it's the El Paso Paint Center on the east side here at 12200 uh, Paseo Nuevo 79928 here on the far east between Pelicano and Vista del Sol. So I'm still waiting. Still waiting. Find it hard to believe that it takes this long to go ahead. Find it hard to believe that it takes this damn long to go ahead and print up something unless you're typing it, right? Which like I said when I walked in, you may I gotta go back and check, but you may be able to see it. When I walked in at the camera, you see the people behind the desk, their little bodyguard here, stopping people, mainly me, because when I first left and I you know when I tried to record they went inside, I waited, then I opened the door and the guy was literally up against the door. So So this is the treatment now the socialist state of America has gone into. Our veterans who have, have earned everything that we're trying to get, my medical treatment, you know, I didn't ask to be get injured or anything like that, it happened. The military does not pay workman's compensation. So they by law have to go ahead and compensate you somehow. Medical treatment, I'm 100% disabled. By treatment, for, you know, through my services of five years in the service, and I got injured in service, that's why I got out. Not like someone likes to claim for any other reasons. Yeah, I've, I have furnished the proof. So, uh, you know, I'm honorably discharged. I got out of the military for, uh, uh, for under a medical evaluation board for injuries sustained while over in Iraq, as per my DD-214, and per my Army Medical Evaluation, or MEB, in the Physical Evaluation, or the Physical Disability Agency, the PDA, has, has granted me, and I got out of the Army. Uh, and the funny thing was, I signed up, my contract was five years, okay? My ETS date was supposed to be August of 2009. My medical discharge took in April 15th, April 15th of, uh, April 15th. Okay, here comes the police. So we are on scene now. That's Echo 19048, Echo 18131. Two officers now. I've got called out here. So that's what they did. So they called the El Paso PD, which is fine. They're well within their rights. How's it going, officer? Well, sir. I get your name and badge number, please. Sir, how do you mean? Badge number 3144. What's going on? Oh, well, they're, they're violating my rights. I, I'm a disabled veteran. I had paperwork. I'm mask exempt. They don't discern the right to kick me out and refuse me service medically. It's a violation of HIPAA law, Americans with Disabilities Act, and it's also a violation of their medical uh, code of ethics, the, uh, the Hippocratic Oath. Say again? Did you provide them that paperwork? Yeah, I, I told the lady when I went in there. Under HIPAA, I don't have to disclose it. That's also a federal law that they have to understand. I'm a disabled veteran. They know that because they had the, the paperwork for my appointment through the, uh, the VA. I came in here, I signed in, I explained to the woman, I was told when I made the appointment that I told them I have a medical exemption. I don't have to wear a mask because of my, my conditions. They, they said, just bring my paperwork. I brought my paperwork. I uh, told the woman at the desk, I had it in my hand. She didn't even look at it. She said, I have to ask the office manager. So she asked me to wait outside with my wife. I stepped outside, we wait. I've been out here since. They came out and said that you by our policy, I don't have to answer the policy. Okay, the federal law supersedes their policy as well as the laws that are in place for, for medical stuff, the medical exemption, for instance. They're refusing me service, which is a crime in of itself because they're taking federal money from the VA. They cannot, by law, just like a hospital, cannot refuse medical treatment. Okay, I asked for their policy because they told me that it's their policy. I said, provide it to me so I can give it to my attorney. I've been waiting out here since. 
okay? They don't have a policy because all they have to do is print it off. They're typing it up as we speak. And now that the fact is they're wasting taxpayer funds now calling you guys because there's no crime. Okay, there's no crime out here. They cannot trespass me also because this is a medical thing. Okay, and this is, they're in violation of the law. So they can't trespass. So anything that you guys are going to be doing with this, that will be a violation of the law as well. And I'm not against you guys. I'm just, I'm out here because this, this is BS. Okay. Do you have an ID, sir? I do, but I'm not going to give it unless I'm being under arrest or detained and under which ground what am I being detained for? Well, you're not under arrest and you're not detained right now. We're investigating because okay. they're well, that's, calling on you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and give that since I'm not being uh, detained or uh, under arrest. And I respect, like I said, I'm not trying to be, I'm just really irate right now because this is the, probably the fourth time that this type of crap has happened that these people think that mask mandates are law. And it's not. It's not a law, it's a suggestion at best. And in fact, again, under the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, they cannot refuse service. And being a medical facility and also receiving federal funds from the Department of Veterans Affairs, they are in violation. So you said your name was, how do you pronounce your last name again? Jaramillo. Jaramillo and 3134. And yours? Mobley? Mobley? Mobley. Was it? Mobley. Mobley. And what was your badge number? 3419. Okay. And then you guys are out of what? The uh, Pebble Hills Command? Okay. Yeah, you can talk to them because like, and just let it be for the record. If uh, they try to enforce any trespass, it's under duress that I'm I'm leaving and not complying. Okay. All right. Where's your wife? My wife is here. Is she waiting inside? No, she's not waiting inside. Because okay. I've been very compliant. I I told him, look, I have I walked in, I had my paperwork. I said I do have a mask uh, a mask. Uh, exemption they said okay you're gonna have to step outside we can talk to our manager i waited okay not a problem they came out and they said well our policy I was like well respectfully your policy does not apply to me because i'm not an employee that's the only policies of force are in for the employees the policies do enforce to the public so no they're not the law the law mass, is what's their mass policy which was mandated i mean you know good man is put out yeah, yeah but governor abbott also said, said it's unenforceable that mass should be drawn so the, well it should be it's a suggestion correct yeah, but you're, but you're protecting other no, I'm not. You have to be sick to be protected. You don't know if you're sick. You're I do know I'm not sick. Asymptomatic. No, I can't. The fact, of the, fa the fact of the matter is, since I've not caught anything this whole time, Did and the fact that anything? no one in my family has been, and because the probability of three people in one household, all three being asymptomatic, is impossible. So just because I haven't contacted it yet doesn't mean I'm not, I'm not, mm -hmm. not susceptible to it. Anyone's susceptible to it, just like the flu or anything else. The fact of the matter is, like you said, since November, since all this stuff came out, I have not been sick once. But the fact is, again, too, Governor Abbott, through all the lawsuits that were being filed against him, said, no, you cannot enforce these. That's why you can't arrest me for not wearing a mask. That's why they had that back a couple of weeks ago to a couple of months ago, the $1,000 fine, six months in jail or both. He said, no, you can't enforce that because that is a violation of the Constitution because there is no crime committed and there's no, you know, being an officer, what... Your TCOL certification, did you take any class on pandemic control or uh, mask mandates or anything of that nature? Oh, I also said that I would apply by the people above me, right? Just like you did when you became a veteran, right? Yeah, but it's also, too, also in there, it's, I took an oath to the Constitution of the United States, just like you did to the Constitution of Texas and the United States. Where in the Constitution does it grant authority for a man to say, you have to do this? It does not. There's no law. law. But they also, man, too, they make a city ordinance or an ordinance. But a city ordinance is not a law. It Did you? Law. No, it's, it's not. Ordinance. Did you vote for it? It's Did it go before the people? It's an emergency ordinance. It's it's that, it's not enforceable. That, that it is not enforceable. It is not under the Constitution, under the Supremacy Clause. No law that the United States Supreme Court has mandated. No law shall be repugnant to the Constitution. Okay, so so everything that you're preaching. I'm not where, preaching. It's where, fact. Where's it getting you? Oh, it's, it's getting not, me because it's 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 getting, it's getting me those, the stuff that I need because it's going to be a lawsuit it's not that's going to be filed. Those doors right now. That's it's fine. I don't care. It's it, the reward at the end of the tunnel is going to be more just now because they're violating my medical treatment that they're going to charge the VA for, which is going to steal money out of your pocket because they're going to mark me as a no show and they're going to submit my payment for I the VA. Steal money out of my pocket. What's up? I can steal money out of my pocket. Yeah, it is your taxes. Out of my federal taxes. Out of your taxes. You're paying for treatment for veterans. I'm a veteran as well. So. Okay, so it's it's money that's waste, fraud, and abuse, correct? If 
I came to a place and they told me, hey, put on a mask, you can't come in. That, that, I see, would, but that's your prerogative. Me? I'm an oath keeper. I took an oath to defend the Constitution. Just, well, then, then again, then you would know, you would know too that if someone gave you, if I gave you an order right now as the chief of police and said, go arrest that person with no cause, would you go ahead and arrest that man? Okay, so this is the same concept. You're called out this here for something policy. that's unenforceable. It's, it's stated on their door. That's, Matt, policy is not a law. Okay? I also have, have okay, the okay. Right to service to you. Okay. I I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and follow your it's thing like here. Going to Circle K and they say you can't come in and buy Well, they can't though. They can't. Sure they can. they no, they can't. Again, I, I reference you to the Americans with Disabilities Act where it says that they cannot discriminate. They have to it's under that law. Yes, it is because of a disability. How is it a discrimination? It's because when you have a medical exemption for said for said case, okay, for a uh, disability, okay, you are exempt from such unlawful order or anything you want to call it, mandate, decree. Credo, whatever so you want to call it. You're telling me that you can walk around and be free of any charges or any complaints of any type simply because you have a medical disability. Long as they are within the confines of the law. And just as you'd like to say with Governor Abbott, he also put out in his General Order 29 that it is unenforceable. There are people that are exempt to that. Under our, our section number two of that, I am under that. A person with a disability that precludes them from such mass. Be a problem. You went, no, I did not because when I because when I called when I called and made my appointment through the VA and they confirmed it, I said, okay, with everything that's going on, I have a mass exemption. Oh, that's fine. Just bring your documentation with you. I brought documentation, which was this packet that I showed you right here. I had it in my hand, just like this. I have my paperwork. Oh well, I have to go ahead and talk to the manager. You step outside. Not once did she look at it, but she wanted to know my my disability. And I said, well, under the HIPAA Act. Which I know because I worked in law or healthcare, I and I worked was. in law enforcement. So I was like, I am exempt from that. So I had that's why I had the exemption. Well, I have to go ahead and talk to the manager. I waited outside respectfully, just waited around. They came out and said, since you're not wearing a mask, uh, we can't go ahead. I'm like, so you're denying me service under what grounds? That I told you and I explained on the phone and in person now, and I had the proof with me. You did not ask to see it. You just said no. That is a violation now because now you're refusing medical service and you know as well as I do a medical facility cannot deny people especially if taking federal funds the Department of Federal uh, uh, Department of Veteran Affairs is a federal uh, agency so there go just just going to a hospital you cannot that's why they can take the crackhead off the street that OD and not get a bill for it they just submit it to the government to pay for it under the Medicaid and Medicare. That's what the VA healthcare is. It's, it's just Medicaid. This stuff is going on long enough, and it's stupid. And I'm not one of these little pushovers that just, okay, it's for the greater good. That's socialism mentality. The greater good does not apply to a country that was founded off of the individual rights right in under the Constitution. Yeah, but by saying that, that's saying that you're more important than anybody else. No, it's not. That's exactly what you just said. No, by saying the collective, you don't care about the individual. You're saying you don't care about anybody else but yourself by saying that specific... No, actually, it's contradictory to what you're saying there. Because the Constitution, again, was never once in the Constitution does it say for the greater good. Okay, it's, on the, it's founded off the principles of your individual right to bear arms, your individual right to freedom, freedom of worship of the God of your choice. Okay, not that's why we don't have a we're a Christian country and you have to be Baptist, Christian, you know, that's why it's founded. That's an individual right, would you not say? Would you not, not agree with that? That's not, but you're saying there's a pandemic right now. People no, it's not a pandemic, buddy. Oh, okay. Look at the stats 7.7 7 7 billion stats. people in the world, 0.005% is mortality rate. That's not a pandemic. More people died in this country fighting for our revolution from smallpox, influenza, tuberculosis. Civil war, reestablishing our country, taking it back. Typhoid, uh, pneumonia, other types of uh, diseases. Yeah, but look at how long those diseases have been established for, and that's the number. COVID-19 is not new. You cannot, you cannot compare. COVID-19 is not new. You know the common cold is a coronavirus, correct? Yeah, you know that there's a bovine strain. Specifically. It was. It's a mutated is, strain. That's is, all it is. Is a new strain, a new thing. That's and it's been around since November, so it's not new. That's still pretty freaking new. Okay? It's still a lot of time. It's not, it's still a lot of time.
And then if, if wearing a mask is so important, why was DeMargo himself the one that was caught in public violating his own little decree? I'm not saying everybody's perfect. But, but that's the saying, though, that his thing is the do as I say, not as I do mentality. Does the same thing, so. No, he doesn't. Because he never issued that the government, that the, Fed, the United States has to wear a mask. He never issued that. Right? He never put out an order to say that? Commander-in-Chief never ordered it on the military? He did order it to the military. No, he didn't order it on the military. <laughs> that was the, the chief of staff of the army. And I, I, I went through the same thing at the VA. The VA is not the military, so they don't have to suit, they don't they don't listen to that mandate because they're not military, they're not active duty. And then the uh, secretary of uh, the VA never issued that. Anywhere you go, you kind of circumvent Not really. A lot of places that actually respect the law. That's, that's right. So you're saying that the law is is okay to be violated, so for the greater good is your persuasion. Well, our law is designed to be for the public. That's it. It's not for the individual, it's for the public, right? Nope. No? That's not why we elect officials out of public uh, opinion, because they represent what the public wants and not what the individual wants. On your mentality there, okay? Were you at uh, all the laws that you are tar charged with enforcing? Did you vote on any of them? Did you go to the polls and vote? Did I vote for somebody who, who made those laws? That was aligned with my beliefs? Yes. Okay, but did you? No, I'm going off of your persuasion here. That's my so, No, 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 you're, you're thinking about the, the laws itself. How you're saying that even though I'm in the right because of the law, it's for the greater good. Well, as you part of the greater good as a collective, did you individually vote for any of the laws that you are tasked as an officer to uphold? Did you specifically vote on them? I specifically voted for the person who enforced and made those laws, yes. So therefore, I did ergo vote for that law. So you, you voted for someone before you were born who put laws in that don't that you have no say on, but yet you're supposed to bow down to them? If I have a problem with that law, then I vote for somebody who's going to change that law. And that's a problem. No one's changing it. So, And it's the people, people's responsibility. Because remember, we the people, it not we the government. No, it's, it's not the politician. It's the people. That's why it says to the preamble, we the people, in order to create a more perfect union. So we're still waiting now on 38 minutes now, waiting for that policy to come here. All they had to do is just furnish the, the paperwork so I can get out of here. That's all they had to do. But they, they got caught with their pants down. That's what, that's what it was. And here it is, them wasted taxpayer resources because no crime has been committed. What's that? Yeah, that's exactly, but this is this is a prime example of these unlawful things because they there is no law. Because again, like, policy is not a law. Because did you up did you take a oath to uphold their individual policy? No, but it's their policy. Did you uphold did you did you so did you as an officer uphold their I'm policy? Upholding, I'm not even upholding their policy, I'm upholding a disturbance at the residence. That they created. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm okay, so, uh, owner of the clinic, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? He is asking for you to leave, please. Okay, can I get that in writing, the trespass order? And I also need the paperwork that I requested, the the policy that they're trying to enforce so that my attorney will have it. Okay. They don't have to give you that right now because... Well, yes, they do. They have to give that to me. Okay. I can ask them for that, but I can't force them to give you that, okay? But you guys can enforce illegal stuff here, what they're doing. 
Yes. No, you Which can't. Is, I'm asking, what are you talking about? You can't enforce this because I'm not wearing a mask. Governor Abbott no, no, and no, GA29. No, no, the mask, okay? I'm not, bro, I'm trying to ask you. Is They're trying to trespass me, I understand. But aren't. they don't have legal grounds because this is a medical facility and it's they cannot. private clinic. They, they but have, they, they elicit they have, funds from the federal government the, under the Department of Veterans they, Affairs. They still have the right to refuse service. Okay. Mm, okay. So as of today, you are receiving a criminal trespass warning, and for that, I will need your ID. Okay. okay. Uh, I will respectfully refuse that because, again, there's no crime committed. And, again, I'm asking for the paperwork that they said that they were going to deliver to me for this policy. Okay. Just, just that sign on the door is not a policy. Okay. The, this has nothing to do with why I'm asking you to leave. Okay? Mm -hmm. On their side, it might, not on mine. What I'm here to enforce is the trespass. They asked you to leave, and they're still asking you to leave. Okay? No, they actually, they have not. They have. Okay. That's the thing. They did not ask me to leave after that second time. That's why I'm still here because I'm still waiting time. on the. Pay I'm still waiting on the paperwork they said they're going to bring me. Okay. That's why I'm still here. So this trespass is not a legal thing. You see what I'm saying? Because the gentleman, the little bodyguard at the door, mm -hmm. sat there and said, "They're getting the paperwork for you." Okay. So that's that's where it was left at. Okay. okay. I can't force him to give it to me. Okay then. Okay. But I, so, I but as need, far as the I trespass, do need, I do need your identification for that trespass. Okay? But there's there's no trespass. I'm issuing you a warning, and it has to be documented. You say you want a document for that. I could do that for you, but you are also going to be trespassed. Okay. The way it works is you receive a verbal warning. After that, you cannot come back. Okay. If you come back anytime after that, you will be arrested for criminal trespass. Okay. So. So again, now the Department of Veterans Affairs has this place as my, my. Uh, You're gonna have to talk to them about that, sir. That's not something I can do. Unfortunately, you have to call them and let them know what happened.